Welcome, this is the SBAC test review solutions. This is going to be covering pages 10 and 11. All right, so let's take a look. We have number 27A, 27B, and 27C here, which is for chapter 10. All right, you want to enter the value of n for the equation. 4 to the power n is equal to 4 to the power 12 times 4 to the power 3. Okay, please understand that this is the multiplication property because these have the same bases of 4. Therefore, you just add the exponent. 12 plus 3 becomes 15. So the bases here are both 4. The n would have to match, so n has to be equal to 15. Second one, same process. Notice it has the same base of 4. Enter the value of n. So again, you do the multiplication property of exponents, or they also call this the power property. Okay, The powers here, which is 12, and the power here is negative 2, you add them. So 12 plus negative 2, which is the same thing as 12 minus 2, gets you 10. For n is equal to 4 to the power 10, so n has to be equal to 10. Next, enter this. Notice this is the same thing as before, but there's no more 4. It becomes the uh, constant of pi. Okay, So again, you combine the exponent because they have the same base and you are multiplying this. Okay, So it's 11 plus 3, which becomes 14, and it's equal to 14 once you see that. Okay, So again, these are all multiplication properties of exponents, and in that case, you keep the base the same, you add the exponent. That's why it's 4, the exponent becomes 15 because you add these two. Okay? Let's look at 28. Select true or false to indicate which of these comparison is true. When you are given this part for the state test, you're not going to be given a calculator on this point. You have to estimate. Okay? I know the square root of 36 uh, is next to the square root of six, 36, right? Because it's the square root of 38 is a little bit over, above square root of 36. Okay, so that's for it should be like above six. But please understand the alligator. Okay, hold on, sorry. Okay, my mic ran out, or it kicked me out. So the square root of 38 here is a little bit over 6 because it is greater than the square root of 36 so it becomes 6.16 here this is 5 and 9 over 10 9 over 10 is just uh, 9 right point 9 but notice this is already a 5 okay so is the alligator gonna eat the 5 or is the alligator gonna eat the 6.16 right right here it says the alligator here you see the mouth it's eating this so is this larger no it's not larger so that is false Okay, that's what I mean by the alligator, the mouth of the inequality. Next, notice that these two are, they both have 5, so just cancel those out. So you just want to compare pi and the square root of 3. The square root of 3 here is less than 3 because pi is automatically 3.14, okay, which is automatically greater than the square root of 3. So that is true. Next, you want to look at the square root of 10. The square root of 10 is close to the square root of 9. Therefore, this should be uh, a little bit over 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. So 3.16. Is this greater than 709? 7 divided by 9, which is going to be 0 0.7. Is the alligator going to eat 3.16? Yes, that is true. Next, 12 divided by the square root of 5. The square root of 5 is close to the square root of 4, which is 2. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. So roughly it became 5.37 or 6. It wouldn't matter. Will the alligator eat the 6 or the 9.57? Here it says that the alligator is eating the 6. Is that true? No. So that is false. Okay. Again, let me repeat, this section, you're not given a calculator. So if you are figuring out these answers using a calculator, you're going to fail this part of the SBAC. Use estimation, okay? Estimate where the uh, square root will fit using what perfect square it's close by, 
okay so you have to memorize like here I had to understand square root 4 here I had to understand square root 9 here I had to understand the square root of 6 here I would understand the square like this was easy okay because the fives cancelled okay 29 select all the possible values for x in this equation this is x to the power 3 or you could say x cubed is equal to 192 that is my original equation so I know this is correct because uh, this is the cubed root, which is 3 in the house, okay, and 192 is in the radical, okay. Split 192 by 64 times 3, you just have to realize this, okay. Um, 64 is a perfect squared, that's why I decided to do that. Um, split it so this is the cube root of 64 and the cube root of 3 so split the radical the cube root of 64 becomes 4 and that's that remains there so bring it back together it becomes 4 the cube root of 3 that looks at, let's look at 30 now right okay oh, so right there so 3 the cube root of 192 which is the uh, original and 4 times the cube root of 3 are both the same thing for this equation okay let's look at number 30 determine for each number whether it is rational or irrational number please understand that an irrational number is a number that goes on forever without stopping that why it's it doesn't make sense why wouldn't the number stop how why does it go on forever that's why it's called irrational a rational number actually stops and is finite. We understand that. We know that things stop. So the first one, 1 divided by the square root of 4, which is simplified into 1 half because the square root of 4 is 2. 1 half is a finite number, so we call that radical. Square root of 19 is not perfect. It will go on forever. It's 4.35889. Goes on, goes on. It goes on forever without repeating. That is irrational because it doesn't make sense. Next, negative 5 times and 1 third. 1 third is 0.3333. It goes on forever repeating. So if you put these together, it becomes negative 5.333. It goes on forever. The fact that it goes on forever, but it repeats, it's rational. Next is 0 0.257. It stops here. It stops right here. Okay. So the fact that it's a decimal doesn't make it irrational or rational. If the decimal goes on forever, right, without repeating, it's irrational. But if the decimal stops, it's rational. So this one would be rational because the decimal stops. Look, stops. Okay? Okay, this one went on forever, but it repeats. This one, irrational, square root 19, right, goes on forever, does not repeat, it's irrational. Next, 31. An expression is shown. Here, Isaac evaluates the expression using these steps. Isaac makes a mistake, which step that Martha... <laughs> this should be Isaac, I'm sorry. Isaac first miss, uh, make, and what is the correct expression for the steps? Alright. So, here are all the steps that I went through, okay? You would have to just follow it, okay? So, the first thing that I did ha I, is I did the power of product. So I combine it these two. So 2 plus 5 becomes 7. Okay. Then I do quotient of power. So when it's a quotient, you subtract. So 3 minus 7 becomes negative 4. Then when it's like this, when it's a power of power, you do the power property by multiplying. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So pause this if you just need to see all the steps. Okay. And each one of these, it's indicated by the red of what is happening. Okay. Product of power, second step. Simplify, quotient of power, simplify, power of power, then simplify. So Isaac make a mistake at what step? Uh, the correct step would, he made the mistake in step 3. It should be x to the 5, y to the 8. His mistake was he put it as x to the 5, y minus 6. He actually added, he didn't multiply. So he this step, which is power of power, he thought it was a product of power. He tried to add the exponent. It's supposed to be a multiplication. Okay, there you go. And let's look at 32. 
Isabel argues that when you multiply two powers with the same base, the new exponent is the product of the original. He used this example below to support his claim. 2 to the power 4 times 2 to the power 3 is equal to 2 to the power 4 times 3, which is equal to 2 to the 12. Is Isabella's argument true or false? If Isabella's argument is false, provide a counterexample using the tablet below. 95% of the time when they give you a tablet and say argue true or false, it's probably false. All right, so let me use some values for you. 2 to the power 4 times 2 to the power 3 is equal to 2 to the power 7. I will argue this and I will show you this. 2 to the power 4 means it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? Times 2 to the power 3, which means times 2 to the power 3. 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to, put these all together, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. How many 2 times 2s are there? There are 7 of them. That's why it's 2 to the power 7. This gives you an expanded form of this equation, which makes this valid. This would be your counter argument. Okay. 33. There are a total of 3,000 students in a high school, grades 9 to 12. Fill in this chart. We know that 25% of the total number of students are in the 11th grade. 25% in decimal form is 0.25. We have to multiply that to 3,000. That will get you 750. Therefore, it's 750 here. Next, it says 300% of the total number of students are in the 10th grade. Again, you have to put this into a decimal, which is 0 0.30, times that by the number of students, the total number of students, which is 3,000. So 0 0.30 times 3,000 equals to 750. This is wrong. This should be 900. Okay. I made the mistake here. All right. Next. The number of students in the ninth grade is 50 less than the number of 10th graders. So the original 10th graders is 900. Subtract 50 because it says 50 less equals to 850. Then last one, the rest of the students are in the 12th grade. So just subtract everything from 3000, subtract 750, subtract 900, subtract 850, get you 500. There you go. These are all the students at that school. This covers pages 10 and 11.